cells are capable of reproducing themselves and this is very important because it allows a number of uh, really critical things to happen for organisms. So for one, just kind of starting with the basics, the fact that cells can reproduce and d grow and divide, um, this is essentially what allows our bodies to get larger over time. We start out life very small and we continually grow until we reach adulthood. Um, and then there's still a lot of maintenance that needs to take place even in a fully grown adult. And cell division is really critical for all those processes. So just to start making a list, what does cell reproduction accomplish? This allows growth, and um, the picture here, by the way, the picture on the slide, this is showing growth of a sea urchin over time. So sea urchins, just like people, they start off life as a single fertilized egg, and that egg cell undergoes a round of division. This is showing one cell that's dividing into two. And then each of those, um, what we would call daughter cells, would then go on and divide in half, and so on and so forth. Eventually we're gonna end up with a whole cluster of cells, and ultimately, here is the full-grown sea urchin. So cell division is what allows that whole growth process to happen. Even in a full-grown sea urchin, just like in a full-grown adult, there's still a lot of cell um, division that has to take place. There will be cells like on the surface that start to get some damage and maybe they need to be replaced. So cell replacement, this is another thing that can be accomplished by cell reproduction. Next on the list, uh, asexual reproduction. This is the name for referring to how things like bacteria reproduce, uh, bacteria, also things like amoebas, which is an example of a eukaryotic cell, a single-celled organism. Um, but what this is essentially is just, you start off with one single cell and it divides in two. And in the end, you have two organisms, whereas you used to have one. So there was no um, process of fertilization. There was no sperm cell that had to fertilize an egg cell. Um, so since that did not have to happen, we call this asexual reproduction, meaning not sexual reproduction. Cell division also allows the production of gametes, which is the name for referring to sperm and egg cells. So those are the very special cell types that are involved in sexual reproduction. So um, the type of cell division that allows these things to happen, there are essentially two different types of cell division, and we will be learning about both of them. The first three on this list, these are accomplished by what we might consider a sort of normal cell division. This is called division by mitosis versus the production of eggs and sperm, this is a different type of cell division. That's called division by meiosis. This word right here uh, looks like it's spelled a little bit funny, but it's pronounced meiosis. And um, again, we're gonna learn both of these cell division types in this module. In order for a cell to divide, this requires a lot of internal coordination and there are a lot of instructions that guide this process to happen. So this brings us to the DNA of the cell. All cells have DNA and um, that DNA encodes the instructions for what the cell needs to do. So we're gonna start off here reviewing, or rather learning a little bit about the DNA that's inside of a cell. If we're talking about the whole set of DNA that one cell has, we would be referring to its genome. That genome has many, many individual genes encoded in it. One gene encodes for one protein. And we'll be getting into that in more detail in a later module. Uh, there's a little bit of a difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes in terms of how their DNA is arranged. So in the case of prokaryotes, their DNA is usually just in one single piece. It's uh, one single circular piece of DNA that floats in the cell. Whereas eukaryotes, remember, they have a very specialized structure. They have a nucleus inside of their cells and that nucleus is where the DNA is housed. And um, in the case of a eukaryote, the DNA is arranged in the form of chromosomes. So what we're looking at over here on this uh, image, this is actually an image of the DNA taken from one cell. And each of these little pieces is a chromosome. So in the case of humans, um, our, our cells have a total of 46 chromosomes in most of the cells throughout our body. Uh, body cells, by the way, are called somatic cells. 
And so what we're looking at here is a set of chromosomes from one cell. You'll notice they're arranged in pairs. So um, if we take all of the chromosomes and just sort of match them all up, it turns out that each one has a match, a matching pair. Um, we get one set from our mom, one set from our dad. So we end up getting two complete sets of chromosomes. This right here, this type of picture, this is called a karyotype. And this is just a really nice way for, for looking at the chromosomes. Uh, by the way, so I mentioned getting one set from mom, one set from dad. Okay, that pair, one from mom, one from dad, those are called homologous chromosomes. They encode, uh, for example, this one right here, chromosome number one. Each of these, the one from mom and the one from dad, they both encode for the same um, features or characteristics like this chromosome perhaps maybe it has a gene that encodes eye color for example so you might inherit one version from your mom and a different version from your dad and depending on the combination that you have that could actually dictate your your actual eye color so anyway homologous chromosomes uh, we'll be seeing that word come up as we go forward in this module cells that have two complete sets of chromosomes like this are said to be diploid and a lot of times that's abbreviated as just 2n meaning we have two copies of each of our chromosomes the other type of cell that we have in our bodies are gametes and these are the sex cells these are include uh, the gametes include eggs and sperm so in females there would be egg cells in males there would be sperm and in these specialized cells there are only 23 chromosomes so um, just one complete set of chromosomes. These cells are said to be haploid or just single N, not two N. Let's look at chromosome structure in a little bit more detail. So if we were to zoom in on a chromosome, what we would ultimately see is that it's made up of DNA, but it's a really long piece of DNA. So it turns out that cells need to keep it organized somehow. To keep this DNA organized, what they do is wrap it around histone proteins in purple. Um, each of these little purple balls is a histone protein. And the DNA, if you look closely, the DNA does actually wrap around the histones. And it ends up looking like they're sort of little clusters. Here's a like a cluster of DNA wrap, wrapped around histones. That's called a nucleosome um, right here, this word. And a lot of times, um, when this sort of structure is viewed with an electron microscope, a very powerful microscope, it just ends up looking like little beads on a string. And so sometimes the DNA um, structure, this is actually referred to as beads on a string. The nucleosomes look like beads um, strung on a string. So ultimately we're going to be talking about cell division in this module. And before a cell is able to divide, the DNA would have to be replicated, right? Because each of the daughter cells would need to get a full set of the DNA. So first thing that happens before division takes place is that all of the DNA duplicates. And so what the cell ends up with is a duplicated chromosome. So shown right here, this is actually um, this is actually one set of DNA, and then right here is its copy, right below. So this whole thing is called a duplicated chromosome, and we say that it's made up of two sister chromatids. Okay, so up here, this is one sister chromatid, and here is another sister chromatid. Sister chromatids are identical. They encode the same genes and the same exact versions of genes. They are literally copies of each other. And they're held together for right now. They're held together right at the middle, um, at this region in the middle. It's called the centromere. And that's going to become important later on when we go through cell division. So chromosomes, just by way of interest, different organisms, different species, have different numbers of chromosomes in their cells. We've already mentioned for humans, humans have 46 chromosomes total throughout the cells of our bodies, but other organisms have fewer or even way more. This very small organism here, this rat, has actually 102 chromosomes in each of its body cells. So the number of chromosomes does not necessarily correlate with the size of the organism as a whole.